exploring that path. Paths are interesting because paths in the wild lead you to adventures. And if you follow paths you don't know, all kinds of things can happen. See, for instance, here's a path. And this path here, you can see it coming along. The, the grass has grown up in the meadow and actually where the path is, it's bare soil. This is used frequently. It's used often. Here's another hare path. You can see it's coming on here. Often to see paths of smaller animals, you've got to get down to their eye level really to see them. Here's a little path that comes off this dirt road and goes down to this dark area where there's often water. So this is used for animals when they want to go and drink. And here's a path that's regularly used. It's on a man-made road, a dirt road, but along here you can see this bit just on the edge is regularly used by animals with soft feet. Look, here comes Catkin to show us where the path is. And she's using the same path the badgers use. And you can see there's a path here. Something pretty big and heavy has been coming down here. You can see it's kind of eroded into this kind of quite hard soil up there. Or it could be that it's something that's not that big and heavy, but it's been doing it for many, many years. Like badgers use the same set, the same paths for sometimes more than a hundred years. So, it's, but I think it's something with hooves. It's hard. I can't see any good. Uh, there's a bit of a print here. Yeah, coming down or going up. But look, across the human path here, and then continue on the way here. So many of us follow established paths and many animals do because it's a path of less resistance follow through the vegetation where your ancestors have been but often it's fun to be a trailblazer and go off trail now when you see paths when you're walking in it could even be in your park or in your garden even on your balcony there'll be paths meaning roots that animals that live there take. Now those animals could be big or bigger and then they leave a much more clearly defined path like something like this and I'll show you some further on some other kinds of paths. Things around here and probably where you are even if you're in the city there'll probably be foxes and at this time of lockdown even I've seen images of deer coming into the city but around here it could be foxes, wolves, deer, wild boar, badgers, hares, are the ones that are kind of big enough to leave quite a substantial path because <clears throat> think about a wolf and since they are down here and it's one of the coolest animals to think about. So. Walking around here now it's you know this is brambles now think a wolf or a fox or your cat they don't have shoes on and these are prickly there's stinging nettles here imagine a stinging nettle going on a wolf's nose probably would hurt so animals tend to use paths again and again the same reason you and i do and in fact animals often use our paths our roads our dirt roads wolves are often seen on human paths and people's paths especially things like crossing bridges because it's better than getting wet right you walk across a bridge Underneath these bushes here, this is mostly hazel, elm, the field maple where I'm standing. It's all denuded of vegetation. You see it's like exposed earth because wild boar ruffle and scuffle around here. They use their strong necks, really powerful, amazingly powerful necks. And they're, they're, they're turned up piggy kind of snout and they dig and they can uproot and they dig and they're looking for anything but especially they love earthworms and they love things like truffles and they love certain kinds of tubers and roots from plants especially in the winter and the spring but they've got amazing noses they know exactly what they're not just randomly snuffling around like a kind of machine they're smelling things maybe even a particular beetle larvae in a particular place and they can smell the distance where it is and they go straight for it but they can uproot small trees so they knew this and here's the path look Coming across, obviously I lift this up as I'm taller there. But a, a big wild boar here is this size. I, they get to almost 200 kilos around here. Is that true? 
157 kilos I've heard of. So, hey, I'm telling a story about wild boar. You can't say they're small. They're big. 157 kilo was something I saw. That's big, right? So it comes right up here. And then up here, and you can kind of see the well. You see their cloven hooves. If you come and look, you can see. You can maybe, you can see it's well, very well used path. And you can see the, with the light at the sand, you can see where the ends of their cloven hoof is. Because the end, the front, is more pointed and they use it for walking up. And there's some small ones here. At this time of year, they would have young that would probably be about two or three months old. So they, females can be, people say they're dangerous. I've never had any, I've never been attacked by almost anything, but wild boar. But if you disturbed a mother wild boar with her babies and she felt cornered and threatened, they're big. So if you did come across one, which people do around here, I come across them quite a lot. You stop and just check out the situation. They're very curious, you know. They come over to you sometimes, but they're curious. They're interested. Especially if you're downwind of them and they can't smell you. They can see you. Their eyesight, I'm not sure, is that great, actually. But their sense of smell is extraordinary. And probably also the way they can feel vibration in their feet. But many animals use vibration in a way that we've kind of lost. Certainly... Certainly insects and reptiles, they're so sensitive to vibration. Things like elephants, we know, communicate with subsonically through vibration. But also, uh, many animals feel, my cat can feel where there's a mole in its hole by feeling the surface. And where there's a fresh mole here, the cat finally puts its hand, its paw up on top and kind of, you can see it's absolutely feeling it. It's so sensitive to vibration. Talking about vibration and how important vibration is. And of course, that's talking about terrestrial animals, but if you're talking about animals that are flying through the air, think of echolocation, that's you know, vibration and sound waves. And you think about water, whales communicating huge, we don't even know how far, but probably hundreds of kilometers and maybe more with subsonic sound. And think about fish have a lateral line, a, 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 a kind of organ, a system of nerves that goes down their side. You can see it on many fish. That has evolved to pick up vibration, but even more, water pressure. Because if you think something moves, it displaces water. So we're not aware of these things very much as human beings. We don't pay much attention with that. So paths from big animals are quite visible. But when the animals start getting smaller, they get more hard to see, like... When the tracks that are on them, for me, get more difficult to recognize. Things like, you think about things that get to the size of a, of, of a martin. In one of the vlogs before I talked, showed you some tracks of the martin going up the tree. Stone martin or the beech martin. Think of things like a squirrel. Think of things that are like getting towards a stoat or a weasel. And then think of things getting smaller, like other kind of things that are like rodenty. Or, you know, you start getting into mice and voles and shrews, uh, that kind of mouse things, right? Rats. Rats leave incredibly distinct paths. It's a whole other thing. But those guys, you don't necessarily see the paths unless you go down low. If you go down low, you start seeing, because in something like this vegetation here, they're not going to walk over the top of it. They find kind of tunnels, things like field voles or wood voles, make kind of tunnels under the vegetation. In fact, when there's snow, you can see those tunnels. They make kind of tunnels under the snow. Now, it's not because they live in tunnels all the time, probably, like things like moles, talpe, they do, right? They're adapted to live in their, you know, their whole thing is about being in the ground as much of the time as they can. If you see a mole out of its, out of its tunnel, it's normally, in my experience, in trouble. But voles and many mice and other kind of rodents they're hiding out and making paths that become tunnels in this kind of vegetation. Or sometimes like field voles actually do under the soil. And the reason they're doing it, I think, it seems to be, is so they're not seen. They're not seen, they're not heard, they're not smelt. Because there's a lot of things here that we would like to have a bit of a munch of a vole or a field mouse or different things. So they're hiding and they've got their roots and their connections and they know how to get to <clears throat> all the things that they need in their 
habitat to do with their you know their niche and what they're doing in the place not the habitat's not just a place where things live it's a thing a place where things happen and there are connections and communications and relationships and like if there's the vole that has to find where it's going to eat and where normally they poo in a collective place voles they poo in a certain place often away from where maybe they got young so it doesn't need snakes or something they can smell or smelling the right so they they do things in certain areas a certain place maybe they got to go and get to the stream to get water and they're going to go and find somewhere to eat and somewhere where it's shady when it's too hot and where it's warmer and not so damp when it's cold so that just those are the obvious things but obviously they've got their whole world and their whole reality so when you start to see paths it starts to get especially obviously that means the tracks because the paths are a sign you have tracks and signs is one way of classifying i think you have tracks are the actual impronti the actual footprints if they're feet because there's other things too snakes and tails that drag and all kinds of things and then signs are the all the other stuff that you can talk about like where the animal's been moving or where the animal's been feeding or where the animal's been maybe predating or maybe where the animal's been cleaning or maybe where it's been fighting so it could be hair it could be bits of feather all these things that tell a story so when i'm in a place like this i'm looking for the stories and of course it's our interpretation we see these things and then it's like well what was that oh there's a feather what does that feather mean or there's a dead bird why is it dead what killed it did it die because it ate poison or did it something eat it well it looks like it's been eaten but how was it eaten what ate it it could be what all these things so the more curious you get as to answer the questions the more interesting the story gets but you're never quite sure unless you actually see the animal leaving the tr with tracking you know you have actually really to be 100 percent sure you've got to kind of see the animal leave the track but even then you're not 100 percent sure because maybe you didn't quite it was in the shadow there and you're not quite sure if it was a moose or if it was a bear and then you go and look at the track i would know the difference between a moose and a bear track you probably would too right moose are in the group that have like cloven hooves right zoccoli there's a lot of them in the deer wild boar because the moose is a big deer right goats sheep all of those groups have those cloven hooves hard hooves they're like they're one particular toe on a horse it's just one toe that's growing it's the nail on those it's two that have these two toes here on the animal that have extended and got their nail has got even more harney with uh, hard protein, chitin. It's really hard. And they can use that. And that's their cloven hoof, like a goat or a sheep or a wild boar. And it has that distinct shape. Whereas other kind of tracks, a lot of them have toes. And then when you get into these small things like these critters, the toe patterning gets really complex because they all kind of pads that come out. And it's really, wow. So there's a lot of questions you start asking the more you look. And then how you answer them, then it's, partly what was perhaps true and partly what you make up and interpret but pathfinding exploring unknown paths is really cool